Hello again everybody, it's time for chapter two of our story, The Folk of the Faraway Tree. Now last week I set you a bit of a challenge seeing if you could predict what was going to happen next, so we'll see today if your predictions came true. We were introduced to our new character Connie, who was a little bit spoiled and she wasn't particularly kind to the other children, so we'll see what happens to her today. So our second chapter is called Up the Faraway Tree. The next day was bright and sunny. Connie woke up feeling rather excited. She was away from home, staying in the country. She had three playmates and they had promised to take her up the faraway tree. Even I don't believe in it. It will be fun to see what they think it is, she said to herself. I hope we have a good time and a nice dinner. The children usually had to do some kind of work in the mornings, even though it was holiday time. Beth and Franny decided to help their mother, while Joe helped father in the garden. There was a good deal to do there because there had been some rain and the weeds had come up by the hundred. Connie didn't like having to help make the beds very much, but the children's mother was quite firm with her. You will do the same as the others, she said, and don't pout like that, Connie. I don't like it. It makes you look ugly. Connie was not used to being spoken to like this. Her mother had always fussed around her and spoilt her and she had been the one and only child in the house. Now she was one of four, and things were very different. Cheer up, said Beth, seeing tears in Connie's eyes. Don't be a spoilt baby. Think of our treat this afternoon. Connie sniffed. Funny sort of treat, she said. But the same, she did cheer up. When three o'clock came, Mother said the children could go. It will take you some time to get up the tree, I'm sure, if you're going to show Connie everything, she said. And please don't let her get wet with Dame Washalot's water, will you? Connie looked up in surprise. Dame Washalot's water, she said. Whatever do you mean? Beth giggled. There's an old woman who lives up the tree who is always washing, she said. She just adores washing and when she finishes, she dips up her wash tub and the soapy water comes splashing down the tree. You have to look out for it. I don't believe a word of it, said Connie, and she didn't. Doing washing up a tree sounds quite daft to me. Let's go now, said Beth, or we won't be at Moonfaces by four o'clock. I must go and change into a pretty dress, said Connie. No, don't, said Franny, go as you are. We don't change into nice clothes when we go up the tree. What? Go to dinner in ordinary clothes, cried Connie. I just couldn't. And off she went to put on a clean white dress. They all went to the edge of the wood. There was a ditch there. Jump over this and you're in the enchanted wood, said Beth. They all jumped. Connie too. As soon as she was across the ditch and heard the trees whispering, whish, 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 as they always did in the enchanted wood, Connie felt different. She felt excited and curious and happy. She felt as if there was magic around although she didn't believe in magic. It was a really lovely feeling. They went through the wood and came to an enormous tree with a tremendously thick and knotted trunk. Gosh, she said, I've never seen such a tree before. Is this the magic faraway tree? How marvellous. Yes, said Joe, enjoying Connie's surprise. And at the top, as we told you, there's a different land every week. Can you remember any of the lands that they visited? Have a think back to the other stories. I don't know what land is there now. We don't always go. Sometimes the lands aren't very nice. Once there was a land of tempers that was just horrid. And a little while ago, there was the land of punishments. We didn't go there, you can guess. We asked our friends Silky and Moonface what it was like and they said they didn't know either but they could hear shouts and cries going on all the time. Gosh, said Connie alarmed, I wouldn't like to go to a land like that. Although of course, she added quickly, I don't believe in such things. Of course you don't, said Joe with a grin. You don't believe in the faraway tree either, do you? And yet you're going to climb it. Come on, up we go. They swung themselves up on the lower branches. It was a very easy climb to the tree. The branches were broad and strong and so many little folk walked up and down the tree all day long that the little paths had been worn on the broad boughs. What sort of tree is it? said Connie. It looks like a cherry tree to me. Oh, 
Look, there are some ripe cherries just out of my reach though. Never mind, I'll pick some further up. Better pick them now or you may find the tree is growing walnuts a bit higher up, said Beth laughing. It's a magic tree, you know. It grows all kinds of different things at any time. Sure enough, when Connie looked for the ripe cher cherries a little way up, she found to her surprise that the tree was now growing horse chestnut leaves and had prickly covered horse chestnuts. She was surprised and disappointed and very puzzled. Could it really be a magic tree then? Soon they met all kind of little folk coming down the tree. There were elves and pixies, a goblin or two, a few rabbits and one or two squirrels. It was odd to see a rabbit up a tree. Connie blinked her eyes to see if it was really looking at rabbits up a tree, but there was no doubt about it. She was. The funny thing was, they were dressed in clothes too. That was odder than ever. Do people live in this tree? asked Connie in wonder as they came to a little window in the big trunk. Oh yes, lots of them, said Joe. But don't go peeping into that window now, Connie. The angry pixie lives inside that little house and he doesn't hate people to peep in. All right, I won't peep in, said Connie, who was very curious indeed to know what the little house looked like. She meant to peep, of course. She was far too inquisitive a little girl not to do a bit of prying if she had the chance. My shoelace is undone, she called to the others. You go on ahead and I'll follow. I bet she wants to peep whispered Joe to Beth with a grin. Come on, let her. They went to a higher branch. Connie pretended to fiddle about with her shoe. And then when she saw that the others were a little way up, she climbed quickly over to the window. She peeped in. Oh, what fun. Oh, how lovely. There was a proper little room inside the tree with a bed and a chair and a table. Sitting, writing at the table was the angry pixie, his glasses on his nose. And he had an enormous ink pot full of ink and a very small pen and his fingers were stained purple with ink. Connie's shadow at the window made him look up and he saw the little girl there peeping and he flew into one of his tempers. He shot to his feet, picked up an enormous ink pot and rushed to the window. He opened it and yelled loudly, peeping again? Everybody peeps in at my window, everybody. I won't have it. I really won't have it. He emptied the ink pot all over the alarmed Connie. The ink fell in big spots on her clothes and on her cheeks and on her hands. She was in a terrible mess. Oh, oh, you wicked thing, she cried. Look at what you've done to me. Well, you shouldn't peep, cried the angry pixie, still in a rage. Now I can't finish my letter. I've got no more ink, you bad girl, you horrid peeper. Joe, Beth, come and help me, sobbed Connie, crying tears of anger and despair down her ink-smudged cheeks. The angry pixie suddenly looked surprised and a little ashamed. Oh, um, you're a friend of Joe's? he asked. Why didn't you say so? I can see here the angry pixie and the ink that he's thrown all over Connie's white dress. It was all white before. Now it's covered in ink stains. I would have shouted at you for peeping, but I wouldn't have thrown ink at you. Really, I wouldn't, Joe. You should have warned people not to peep. I did, said Joe, appearing at the window too. It's her own fault. My, you do look a mess, Connie. Come on, we'll never be at Moonfaces by four o'clock. Wiping her tears away, Connie followed the others up the tree. They came to another window and this time the three children looked in, but Connie wouldn't. No, thank you. She said, I'm not going to have things thrown at me again. I think the people who live here are horrid. You needn't be afraid of peeping in at this window, said Joe. The owl lives here and he always sleeps in the daytime, so he never sees people peeping in. He's a great friend of Silky the fairy. Look at him lying asleep on his bed. The red nightcap he's got on was knitted for, for him by Silky. Doesn't he look nice in it? But Connie wouldn't look in. She was angry and sulky. She went on at the tree by herself. Joe suddenly heard a sound he knew very well and he yelled loudly to Connie. Hey, Connie, Connie, look out. I can hear Dame Washalot's water coming down the tree. Look out. Connie was just about to answer that she didn't believe in Dame Washalot or her silly water 
when a cascade of dirty soapy water came splashing down the faraway tree. It fell all over poor Connie and soaked her from head to foot. Some of the suds stayed in her hair and she looked a dreadful sight. The others had all ducked under broad boughs as soon as they heard the water coming and they didn't get a drop on them. Joe began to laugh when he saw Connie. The little girl burst into tears again. Let me go home, let me go home, she wept. I hate your faraway tree, I hate all the people in it. Let me go home. The silvery voice called down the tree. Who's in trouble? Come up and I'll help you. It's dear Silky, said Beth. Come on, Connie, she'll get you dry again. And that's the end of our second chapter. Now, this week on your bingo board, I've asked you a question about the characters in the story. So I want you to have a think about how the characters are feeling in that chapter, especially Connie, because she's been a bit angry, she's been sad, she's been excited. Have you ever felt like that? And could you remember a time when you felt like that. So have a go at that challenge for me and I'll read the next chapter. Bye everyone, missing you.